Hello, travel business babes. So I'm gonna go live and answer a couple of your questions. And then I'm also gonna give you a small training on self-trust, intuition, travel, and business and how it all works together. But I'm just gonna wait and see um, if you guys come on. All right, hi, Kelsey, welcome. I'm gonna be talking about self-trust and business and travel. And I'm also gonna be answering the questions that you guys asked in the last question box. Also, if you guys are wondering, I'm in Houston, Texas right now, and it's super hot. So if you see me glistening, <laughs> it's because uh, we've got some humidity in the air. And so, I mean, I love it. I love hanging out outside and, and feeling like this, but um, that's, that's why it's uh, super nice and, and warm outside. All right, I'm just gonna wait another minute, see if people join, and then I'm just gonna start answering the questions that I got in the question box. And of course, if you have any questions, just pop them in the question box below and I can answer them live on the call. Uh, if you have a coaching question as well, you can um, actually get some live coaching on this call too. If you have a question specifically to something that you're dealing with, you can get some free live coaching from me. So go ahead and stick around for that. Yes, yeah, so we got the super nice breeze going. It's very um, photogenic and not planned at all. So it's perfect. <laughs> awesome. So 547. All right. So let's get started. So like I've mentioned, my name is Maria. I am a self-trust and intuition mentor. And what that means is I really coach women and mentor women through the process of cultivating self-trust. So cultivating a strong foundation of trust in themselves and then going and taking action on it. So we pair intuition with self-trust, self-love, self-awareness, self-acceptance. And then we take that and turn it into action. And we use that action in a cycle, right? So we take our trust and we turn it into action. And the more we take action on, on our self-trust, the more trust that builds into ourselves. So that's really my process. And um, it's something that I'm super passionate about. I've been sort of channeling this message for over a year and a half now. And it feels really amazing to be like teaching it live right now and, and to be teaching it to women uh, in my business. So that's what I am up to. Hello these new people joining. So I'm going to go ahead and start answering your questions that you asked in the question box. So the first question I got is what is my favorite thing about traveling? And for me, it has to be the discovery of something like I am a huge explorer. I just love to explore. Hey, Alicia. Um, I love to explore things. And it's not just exploring like the external world that I'm in. So if I'm in a new country, you know, exploring the country, but it's also exploring what am I learning about myself as I'm in this new place. Um, so it's really that sort of fun adventure, play, exploration um, sort of vibe that I'm super attracted to and why I love going to countries and having sort of an idea of what to do, but mostly like letting myself be guided and getting excited about things and sort of being like, ooh, what's this? And, and letting myself just sort of follow to see what's going on. So an example of that was you know, going to Norway in 2014, and we didn't know that we were going to be there for their 100 year of um, independence. And so we're in Norway, we're looking at this parade of their 100 year independence day, and we just sort of start following the parade and we get to the, the palace where the king and the queen are like saying hi to everybody. And then we get to this like amazing new park where like the most beautiful statues that I've ever seen are there. So that's really my favorite part of traveling is just like, going to this new place and like letting myself explore it and then also seeing what kind of reaction that's um, evoking in myself and learning more about myself in the process. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Hi to all the new people. I'm going to wave to everybody. <laughs> um, I got another question, which is what have you needed? To, uh, when have you needed to use self-trust to take the leap to travel to certain places? Um, I think almost every time as like an adult that I've gone to a new place, it's been an act of trust. So the perfect example of this is when I was 21. Um, so if you guys don't know, I actually studied marine science in university. So I have a degree in marine science and I'm super passionate about oceanography and like all the nerdy talk and all that good stuff. And when I was 21, I did a very intense uh, research journey that sailed from New Zealand to Tahiti for six weeks on a sailboat while conducting research. And what that meant was 
six weeks of no internet. <laughs> so six weeks of just, yeah, it was super cool. <laughs> um, six weeks of no internet, six weeks of just being with the 35 people around me and six weeks of learning to sail a sailboat and check the engine and wrap the sails and tie the, all the right knots and also to do research on a moving vessel, which was really crazy. Like normally in a lab, you would get to pipette everything and it's very stable. But when you're in a moving vessel and you're using a microscope and trying to count the amount of you know, plankton that you're seeing under the microscope, it's a really intense experience. So <laughs> that's definitely my top uh, ex you know, experience of like using self-trust. And after that trip, I spent some time alone in Australia um, and just let myself explore Australia in a way that was super fun for me and just let myself, I, you know, I woke up at 5 a.m. and did 17 mile hikes and then crazy stuff like that. So it was just, it was super, it was definitely a really nice experience of just like trusting what I wanted to do and following it. Um, so that was a really good time. But yes, anytime that as an adult that I've consciously been like, I want to go take a trip, it's always like. So I'm going to. call Now we are on do not disturb. So hopefully you guys can see me again. Sorry about that interruption. Um, so I got some other questions. So Bali or Tahiti? Um, Tahiti. <laughs> I love Tahiti so much because of I just my experience of of going there like I went there I arrived via ship right and like I arrived having known having studied you know Polynesian culture and s studying the ocean around it and sort of understanding like the nature and the people that were there and understanding the country like it was one of the most researched countries that I've been to like that I researched it a lot before going there and so um yeah having that um, background knowledge really made me appreciate the country a lot more. Um, Bali is amazing. I, I absolutely love Bali, but, um, yeah, Tahiti for me is sort of like my first love and it really gave me a really strong connection to the Pacific ocean and just everything that is over, uh, in the Pacific. I think it's fantastic. So thanks for the question. Um, okay. So you guys saw in the last polls that I have three passports. So not like three old passports from the same country. No, I have three different citizenships to three different countries. So somebody asked me, what are the three passports that I have? And the first one is from Venezuela. So I am originally from Venezuela. Uh, that's where I was born. I moved to Texas when I was uh, seven. So, you know, a long time ago, uh, been in the US. And during uh, the time that we were in the US, we actually also, because of my grandfather, uh, became Spanish citizens. Um, so I actually have a European citizenship as well. And then shortly after that, we were in the US long enough to become naturalized and go through that whole green card process, and all that good stuff. So my third and final passport is actually the US passport, which is funny because that's the country that I've lived in the most, um, but it's the last passport that I got. So. Uh, my three passports are Venezuela, Spain, and the U.S., which is super, super awesome. Hi, Mac. All these new people. Hello. Um, so, yes, if you're wondering, those are my three passports. And I'm originally from Venezuela. For those of you asking, hi, Mariah. Welcome. Um, so another question that I got is, what are my, what's my favorite country and top three self-trust tips? It was in the same question. So... My favorite country, that's, uh, that's a, that's a, that is a tough question. I'm going to leave that one for last because I'm not sure right now, but it ha would definitely have to be something by the water because I'm obsessed with the water. And I'm in Houston, by the way, if you were wondering, um, Mac. Um, so my top three self-trust tips. So number one is connect within, right? So stop seeking external validation and see if you can make a decision on your own right what is what is calling to you what are the things that you're excited about also connect to your to your inner child right in that way like what are the things that spark your curiosity and what are the things that you um, would normally allow yourself to do without that self-judgment so that's the first is actually connect to your intuition and into your inner voice and your inner compass whatever it is you want to call it inner guidance yes love the water like that that's a huge thing for me for, for self-trust it's like i love the water and, and that's something that i let myself love for my whole life and i actually went and studied it and those are my favorite countries and so it's a big big area of self-trust for me my second self-trust tip is actually go back in your life and look at 
where you've made decisions in the past that were like super aligned and see if you can repeat that cycle. So when you're finding that you're like doubting yourself or you're second guessing yourself, look back in your past and see what decisions have I made that were super aligned and and how did I feel, right? Like how did I come to that decision? What was my process? And see if you can repeat that and start to understand how you process your own intuition and how you take action on it. Some people have a really strong intuitive hit and they just like know to take action on that thing right away. Other people like myself, I actually need some time to really sort of, okay, I got excited about something, but now I'm going to take some time and see, is this something that's still really aligned after, after a couple of days, after a couple of weeks, is that something I still want to do? And you need to start to understand yourself and understand how your own intuition works. Um, and you can start doing that by looking back at your past. And my last self-trust tip is to go take action on it. So, and start small. So if you're like, you know, working a nine to five right now and you're super called to like start your own business, but that's like a massive leap, you know, that's a really, it's a hard thing to, to make that leap when you haven't trusted yourself in that way before. And so take action on smaller things. So say you are feeling really excited about a particular product um, that you haven't bought before. Like maybe you're not you know, haven't bought a bunch of self care stuff in the or skincare stuff in the past, but you're seeing this new company and you're like, wow, okay, like that's a really cool product that I want to check out. And it's a little bit higher price range than you're used to. Let yourself buy it. You know, obviously don't go into debt doing this, but like let yourself get excited about something and see if you can start to take action on those small bits of self trust. And the more you take action on your intuition, the more self trust it'll build. And then you'll be able to take a bigger action and then it'll build more self-trust. And so then by doing all of that stuff, then you can take crazy leaps while trusting yourself and being super aligned with what your intuition is telling you. So I hope that answered your question. Um, And I got another question here. So I have, I just have my, my screen in the back with all the questions that you guys asked me. So thank you guys for asking so many questions. Um, so I'm, I'm a mentor and I got asked, do you mainly work with men or with, or women or men too? I mainly work with women, um, and just women one-on-one. Um, but I have a couple, you know, uh, pockets of men in my audience and they, they resonate with my work as well. So this is, um, and it's not just women and men, it's anybody, any gender, um, that you identify with, um, you know, self-trust is something that everybody can benefit from is connecting, connecting within and taking action on it. It's not a gendered, uh, process. However, for one-on-one clients, um, I do typically just work with women at this point. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Um, top three countries to visit. Okay. This is a little bit easier to answer than the favorite country question. So I'm going to go ahead and answer this question. Top three countries to visit. So, um, a big one for me is Spain. Um, so like I mentioned, my grandfather is from Spain. I have tons of family in Spain and Spain offers a lot. Um, like we, yeah, I've been all over Spain and there's, there's, there's the beach and there's the desert and there's like mountains and there's, you know, sort of colder areas. And it's just, yeah, like the food is incredible. The, the energy is incredible. It feels like everything in Spain is sort of like HD, you know, like when you go there, you're like, wow, like, okay, this is like, everything is super, um, you know, clear and beautiful. And like, it feels like the saturation on the colors is like turned up by 5,000. So I think Spain is, is amazing. Um, another one of my favorite countries to have visited is India and India was incredible because first of all, I'm vegetarian and I have been eating vegetarian pretty much on and off for 14 years now. So there are some times when I, when I'll incorporate a bit more animal protein in my life, but mostly I'm a vegetarian and India is amazing because when you go to India, uh, everything that is vegetarian in a, in a restaurant, typically on the menu, will just have a green dot next to it. So as somebody that likes to explore food and loves to travel um, and, and explore a country by using their food, it was like the best experience for me um, to just be able to eat whatever I wanted and not worry whether it was vegetarian or not. Um, and yeah, so that's so Indian food is incredible, but also in India again, another country that just, I mean, I think all countries do have so much to offer, but India was just one of those incredibly vibrant countries where you go there and you are just like, the, the senses are, all the senses are, are being used and you get to explore. If you're coming from, you know, the US or, or Venezuela, like myself, you know, it's, it's very different. Um, and so it was very nice to go in there and just experience 
this whole new world basically and experience it through food and experience it through smell and taste and the sounds and the music and like the variety of cars on the road and like it was just it was such a fantastic fun place like I just have so many good memories from from being in India and last three last top three top three countries to visit um ah, I just have to go back to French Polynesia I mean the water is incredible the marine life is incredible the people are incredible they're so kind they are so generous um the it's 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 safe it's um it's like I'm, I'm from the tropics so i love the tropics and it's just it feels like home to me um really even though of course i'm not from i'm not from french polynesia but it has that tropical feel and it feels very very connected to me so um the the flowers smell incredible the fruit is incredible like the, it's just it's a really magical place. So yeah, French Polynesia, Tahiti, Morea, uh, Raivavai. Um, I've never been to Bora Bora, but Bora Bora would be amazing to visit uh, eventually. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take one more question. So um, Mac is asking if I work with Christy. I'm not sure who Christy is. So let me know um, if you want me to answer that because I'm not sure who she is. Um, and I'm gonna answer one more question. So what inspired me to become a self-trust mentor? So um, quite a few things, but um, particularly was this very strong message that I kept receiving of trust and go. And this is what I was talking about before, which is you trust yourself and then you go take an action on it. And that builds more trust in yourself and then you go take a bigger action on it. So um, I just kept receiving that message, trust and go, trust and go. And it was something that I was started to apply in my life. And, you know, over the course of a year and a half, I, because of that, applying that in my life, I left a job that I didn't like. I uh, met my partner now. We've been together for a year and a half, um, you know, and that's an incredible relationship that I, the one that I was like, you know, looking for. Um, I created this business. I took some amazing trips that I that I had always wanted to take. Uh, you know, um, there was so much, um, so many experiences and things that I, you know, brought into my life by trusting myself and taking action on it. But the main thing that I value it like yes the boyfriend is incredible and the business is incredible and going to Singapore and going to Bali and all that stuff ah Singapore Singapore is definitely like fourth favorite country to visit but yes going to Singapore going to Bali doing all those things that I wanted to do like that's incredible but the more important thing is when you actually trust yourself and when you're taking action from a place that's super aligned with who you are that feeling of trusting yourself fully deeply completely even when things don't make sense and still being able to go take action on it and know that you are going to have your own back that feeling is priceless so that's what inspired me to become a mentor in this space um and just working now with women who are super high achieving but deal with imposter syndrome and constantly doubt themselves and are spinning in circles and um you know seeing the impact that i can make by just spreading the simple message of trust yourself and go take action on it um just inspires me to keep me to keep going every single day so thank you so much for answering that question or asking that question hello to all the new people so let's get into this mini training and if you have any more questions just use the question box below um, and i can answer all of that stuff for you guys but i wanted to talk about how self-trust uh, relates to business and travel. And actually, I'm going to answer one question here um, that you're welcome. <laughs> um, I'm going to answer one question here with that training. So um, when you think about starting a business and when you think about traveling anywhere, both of those things relate to just what do you want? Like, what do you want for yourself and your life? Like a business is like a whole lifestyle, right? Like if you're starting your own business, it's typically because you're super interested in that thing and you want to make an impact in that space and you're really passionate about it. And that you know that about yourself is that you're connected with yourself, right? If you know that you're super excited about graphic design or you know you're super excited about um, being, you know, a, a coach or a mentor, if you know you're super excited about creating um, art and selling it, like that's you already connecting with your intuition. And then that you trusted yourself and took action on it uh, is just going to continue to feed that. And then when it comes to travel, you know, so I got this question, um, you know, self-talk, uh, I'm not worthy of this trip, it held me back from travel. What would you suggest to get over it? And it's like, 
if you were super excited about taking a trip and then you talked yourself into the fact that you weren't worthy of it, then that is instead self-abandon, right? So the opposite of self-trust can sometimes be self-abandon. It's not always the opposite, but um, you know, when we take a trip anywhere, we're having to connect with our intuition of what the, where are the countries that we want to go and how do we want to spend our time there and why. And then to actually go and do the trip is an act of self-trust. Yes, I also want to go take a trip. If we could all go take a trip right now, that would be amazing. <laughs> but we have to stay inside and stay safe. So I hear you, Josie. Um, but, you know, take taking the time to really connect with yourself and be like, hey, where do I want to go and why? That actually shows you something about yourself. Like for me, like I mentioned, I'm super inspired by the water. Like I love being in the ocean. Um, Spain's, Sp- the, the ocean in Spain, of northern Spain, is continually the place that I visit when I'm in meditation because it was the most incredible experience of being in that water. Um, And that to me just, again, shows me about who I am, what I love, what makes me feel connected to the universe, to to source, divine, whatever you want to call it, and makes me connect to myself. And so, um, you know, travel is a way that you connect with yourself. And then to go take action on it is that you trust yourself, right? Um, When you take action on the things that you're hearing about yourself, that's actually an expression of self-trust. And so how you can apply self-trust to business and to travel is, like I mentioned at the beginning, my top three tips is like, what do you want? Just, ah, that's such a good question. What do you want? And what are you hearing about yourself that you want? Whether that is, everybody's different, but whether that is through meditation or through journaling, or if you like to go on walks, or if you like to talk out loud to people about the things that are going on, start to pay attention. What are the things that you're excited about? What are the things that you want? What are the things that are calling to you? Um, And then my invitation to you is to go take action on that. Go take action on that thing. So, um, you know, create whatever that is in your life, whether it's a trip or whether it's um, a business, um, and then use that trust and go cycle throughout the trip and then longer term throughout your business. So in your business, you're also always going to be looking at creating new things um, or you're going to be taking on new clients or you're going to be um, creating new partnerships or things like that. Like business is always changing and your business is an extension of yourself. And the more that you can trust yourself to handle your business and to handle the new things that come your way, whether they be exciting opportunities or tough challenges, the more that you can trust yourself that you got this and that you're called to that business for a reason. And then the more that you can take action on it, the easier your business process is going to be and the more fulfilling and more aligned you're going to get because the second that you start taking action on things that you actually trust about yourself the more aligned you're going to get when you're taking action on i should and i have to and society and whatever you're gonna get further and further away from who you authentically are at your core so that's my invitation to you for business and for self-trust is continue to trust who you are trust the things that are exciting to you stop remove any judgment like oh this is not something that's normal or this is not my my parents what my parents think of me or what my friends think of me or like coaching is crazy like I could never do that take all of that out of your head and just connect to what is the thing that you're super excited about and then can you take the tiniest action on it today and then use that tiny action to build on your self-trust and then take a bigger action and then that's going to build more trust in yourself and then you're going to take a bigger action so yeah, that's my problem. Sorry, I about got cut off. But yes, Carolina, that's you know what what I, you know what I would tell you. You have so many interests. That's awesome. Me too. So I'm a marine scientist. I danced for 17 years. Um, I was an opera singer when I was a kid. I worked in the tech space for a long time. I also worked in sales, and I'm a coach. And what what is the story here to, to tell you is that those things that I did, that I let myself explore them, number one, built the trust in myself that I um, am capable of doing all these things. So that's exciting. But the second piece is that I got skills from all of those things to create what I'm creating now. So if I hadn't gone and done worked at a tech job and done the sales process for that, I might not be so good at sales now in my current business or that in my last job, my last full-time job that I ever had, that I was doing marketing for them and doing Instagram for them and all that stuff. It helped me, even though that business wasn't aligned with me and that job wasn't aligned with me, um, that business supported me or that job supported me again in creating my business. And then, yes, of course, like, do you see me using marine science in my job? 
in my in my business now of course not i'm not talking about my papers and i'm not talking about greenhouse gas cycling and oysters which is what my thesis was, was on but that i worked so hard in marine science and that i knew that that was something that was super exciting to me showed me number one how amazing it is to work on something that you're super excited by number two it showed me how to read very critically and think critically and write because you have to do that a lot in science and number three it really um, connected with me like this feeling of flow like I got connected to flow and now I know what that feels like and so the next thing that I get excited by if I can connect to that feeling and that thing that I'm excited by then I know that I should be going that route um, but am I sitting here being like oh dang it like I didn't use marine science and like nobody knows that I have honors in marine science and nobody reads my papers because well no I don't care because like that got me to where I am today and I know that sounds so cliche but I want to bring it down to how did that get me to where I am today I know I got Got these lessons i know what flow feels like i know how to think and read critically and i know how to work hard on something because i'm motivated by it and energized by it rather than forcing myself to work on something like i was excited to study you guys like i loved marine science so if you're interested in lots of things that's okay and not everybody's gonna get clarity at the same time of what's like that thing and guess what for some people like myself you're not going to have one thing. You're going to have multiple things and they're going to be either happening at the same time or you're going to do something for five years or one year and then you're going to switch to something else and that's okay. Please get rid of this idea that you're supposed to have one passion and one thing that fulfills you and it's going to be your one thing forever because that is so not true. For some people it is and for other people it's not and it's no right or wrong or better or worse or whatever um, but I want you to explore the things that you're excited by and, and just let yourself have fun with it and let yourself play because you're going to be picking up skills and learning about yourself and developing trust in yourself as somebody who takes action on their on their desires um, and that's going to lead you to the next thing that you're super excited by whether that's a business whether that's traveling whether that's working in a job or a nonprofit, whatever it is that you want to do it's going to get you there but the second that you fail is when you stop taking action on it so if you're in inaction and self-doubt i invite you to start taking action okay um do i have resources yes i have resources so if you go to my page um, which i will comment down here below, I have an entire library of free resources for you guys. So by Maria Henning, there you go. So my page is at by Maria Henning, so my name, um, and you guys can just click the first link in my bio and it has an entire library of resources for you guys. And it's got two workbooks on there. It's got 10 inspirational wallpapers. I'm gonna be coming out with some guided meditations soon. And periodically I do some giveaways where I give away like a free call, which I just closed actually last week, or I'll do some other giveaways in the future. You're so welcome, Carolina. Thank you so much for sharing about that on this call and asking vulnerably. I was. I totally relate to your experience. So thank you for asking and I'm proud of you for asking. Um, so yes, go get my uh, free resources. You're gonna see this live on here, turn into an IGTV later. So you can always go back and listen to this again if you need to. Um, and then in the future, you know, go and get those, go and get those guidebooks, go and get those wallpapers and meditations. Um, so I hope this training was helpful. Um, I'm gonna touch again on the self-talk, I'm not worthy of this trip thing. So. Um, what I would suggest to get over any I'm not worthy stuff um, is for me, it's always go deeper. Why? Like, why am I not worthy of this thing, right? Like, what is the story that I'm telling about myself? And the second thing is question yourself. Is that actually true? Is it actually true that I'm not worthy of that? Or is it just a story that somebody else put in my brain? And when you get deeper into that and start questioning it, you're going to start to see that it's actually not something that you took on and you just have it sort of inside you for some reason, whether it was media or whether it was family or your friends or your school or something like that. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say, and, and this is like we're glossing over a ton of stuff in this type of in this type of work. But the last thing I want to say is if you were the one that decided that you were not worthy in the first place, like you were the one that took on that story and believed it as your own, then you are the one that can decide that you are worthy of a trip. You were the one that can say, okay, well, I said I wasn't enough, but I'm going to say, I'm going to flip that switch and say I am enough. Um, and that really is the power of self-development and self-trust and self-actualization, which for me is self-love, um, or sorry, self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-love, and then self-trust. That's really my entire framework. And so if that's something that you are struggling with, then I invite you to look at those four places and see where am I getting stuck? Am I just not knowing who I am? Am I not accepting who I am? Do I not love who I am? And do I not trust all the things that I am? And so this not worthy piece, it's somewhere in these four 
um, somewhere in the, one of these four levels. And um, the, the beautiful thing about life is that you get to choose. I mean, you get to choose if you're worthy of something and you get to choose if you're not worthy of something. And I invite you to choose that you're worthy of that thing that you're excited about. So thank you guys so much for asking all your amazing questions. We've been going for 30 minutes. So I'm going to hop off now and I'll still be around for a little bit for the rest of the day. So if anybody has any more questions, go back a couple of slides and ask them in the question box or put them in the comments of this video below. Um, and I might potentially get on stories later uh, before I go to bed and answer a couple of your questions. But you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for asking so many questions, uh, for being attentive on this call. And again, I have tons of free resources. Head over onto my page. Go ahead and grab my entire free library with workbooks, wallpapers, meditations coming soon, tons of giveaways. Um, and you are going to see some exciting new things also coming onto my page in the next two weeks. So stay around, stick around, say hello, send me a DM. I would love to chat. All right, guys, have an amazing, amazing day and I'll see you soon.